So prayerfully, he'll just go in and hit straight Democratic ticket. He could possibly make the check to you. You cash the check and just give the cash. So we would want to keep all this on the DL. Yeah. Want. This isn't something that we could yeah. no, even do press or no. anything. No, absolutely not. We've gotten people to get on school buses and go right. to Indianapolis to the state house and say, hey, we just need you to show up. Right. And they didn't even know what they were going down with. All they know is the castle. <laughs> it, it really comes back to, in, in this city, in this area, in Gary, Hammond, Chicago, the church. You know, it's it's going to be the driving force for anything that happens. Um, we put politicians in office. Our journalists met Reverend Marlon Mack of Sweet Home Baptist Church in Gary, Indiana on the night of the state's primary election in May. He was attending a victory party for local Democrats. We're getting, you know, the bodies from A, point A to point B, you know, from the pews to the poor. I mean, does... We posed as political consultants, and Reverend Mack was more than happy to tell us about his political influence. We scheduled a meeting with Reverend Mack and a friend of his, Reverend Marion Johnson, to see what they would be up to on Election Day. We've gotten people to get on school buses and go right. to Indianapolis to the state house and say, hey, we just need you to show up. They <laughs> didn't even know what they were going down with. All they know is the cast <laughs> house. Then we support Mike. We actually do support him. I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. I've, I've known him. And I know he's a good man. Some other things he's not just at home. Mm -hmm. So we actually, so nobody has to persuade us to vote for him. Mm -hmm. Thing else, and I keep repeating, we get our people to the poll. Get people to the Then we get our people to the poll. They know who to vote for. It's not going to be well. Who do I vote for? Because <coughs> we don't tell them who to vote for. And, uh, and, and we the don't. We, we will. Oh. We won't get up and just announce it. Everybody knows. Like everybody in my church, they know who I vote for. They know who we can vote And most church, most churches, you take the pastor's lead. So it's also a matter of like the door itself, you know, who you guys let. So it's not technically an endorsement, but the fact that you know they say, okay, well, right. the, the, uh, yeah. the pastor, and that, and that's and that's not a fight. We're, we're not worried about like well, it's not a fight. IRS code provides that 501c3 organizations cannot quote participate in or intervene in any political campaign on behalf of in opposition to any candidate for public office unquote. The most important thing is that pastors, church staff, should not be using church resources to engage in political campaigns. So how do you <coughs> plan to get people to the polls then this year, as of right now? I mean, bottom line is we just, you know, hey, we need you to do this. We mobilize. <coughs> we, we, we go pick out people up. Yeah, yeah we, need you, we need you to go. We need you to do this. We need, you know, I know we're not supposed to tell you who to vote for, but we can tell you why you should vote for this well, my, my, this thing is this, my thing is this, when I make my announcement, I think I shared this with yesterday, what I do is tell people I'm going to vote for. I said, I'm voting, you know, I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. That's automatically telling my congregation to vote for him. Reverend Mack and Reverend Johnson told us many times that they were sure their community would follow their lead at the polls as long as they had the funds. Church we, vans. we have churches that make their vans available. So you could use money for what? For gas? Or right, gas. and to pay drivers. The drivers, and then uh, if they wanted to stop it, you know, you, know, you may have to feed a few people. Oh, so the drivers aren't volunteers? Or, yeah, or they, they, they are volunteers, but you can get but more. You wanna, you can get more if you, if you have bus drivers. have a little okay. something for them. You okay. pay them. Yeah. You can get more. Um, See, we're still working with an impoverished area. Mm -hmm. If I tell a guy I need you to drive all day, I say, well, Pastor, look, I can give you a couple hours, but I got to do something else. Well, you know, I'm trying to make it. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Like I tell him I can have you drive all day and this is what I'm going to be give you for driving all day. And bless him and give you something. Even that could possibly work because, I mean, ju just in case, we, we do need to uh, get people <coughs> to our churches uh, before they go to the polls, load up on them. We may have something inside the church where we can say, now listen, when you go to the polls, like a know, this, is, this is what's at stake, and this is what we need to do. And we need to make sure that, you know, this person has our best interests out. This person supports this, and that doesn't help us. And, you know, just have donuts and coffee. And yeah. I mean, even if it's just that. He's a chick, yeah. Yeah, something. you know, just, you know, and, it's and, like a and get him out. It's yeah. Before you go out, it's really like a full-fledged campaign rally. And in individual churches. So people, I mean, they might, yeah, they like they're, they're hungry. They might, you know, they can't spend a day. They they need to go out and get right. resources and food for right. themselves. So but if, if you, you have all this stuff for them, they're not going anywhere. They're going to do exactly what you direct them. They were hoping that our journalists would connect them with a donor to fund their get-out-the-vote efforts, and there was a very specific way they wanted the donation to be made. It would be done confidential through the past. So, help me understand just from the, um, how, how it would have transaction. I mean, it there, he could possibly make a check to you. Mm -hmm. You cash the check and just give me cash. Or he could make the check to a particular church and you know works out because it's a charitable donation to him because he just it looks like he just gave a donation to a church. Yeah if he just writes it to a church then it's just a donation to the church. But like because the then you might get there might be like a you know say oh how did you you got a check how did you spend the money and make sure it went church. to the church. Right. Oh, okay. would be a paper church. Okay. Which is the simplest church. way it is would be <laughs> so you don't have to worry about anything. He would make the check to you guys. You guys would cash it and give it to us as a charitable donation to the church. Okay. And that could be anonymous. Right, yeah. anonymous. The charitable donation will, will never get you in any trouble either, and it won't get us in any trouble. But say some Republican decides he wants to find that. And then we got these we got these check, this check trail. Yeah, he writes a check to the church. Okay, why is he writing a check to a church in the area? You know, as opposed to just giving, <coughs> writing a check to you guys who he has a professional relationship with, so, which could just simply be consulting for you. So, so we would want to keep all this on the DL. We would yeah. want, this isn't something that we could yeah. keep no, with no, press or no, 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 Absolutely not. And what was wrong with the donations being made public? See, because then where you open this up with, let me tell you what happened. Did you get then some Republicans come around. We would have to do the same thing because we would be seen as being biased towards the Democratic Party. So this eliminates that. You wouldn't put us in a position where we would have to work with people like Trump or some other people that we just don't don't really support. Our people don't support them, but we would have to just go through the motions that we did it with you guys. I mean, literally, we can have 20 vans rolling here you know, And you see all these vans rolling to the polls with the name of the church and the pastor's name on the side. And, and they know that the pastor's provided that. They know who they're going for. Mm -hmm. They know who it's for. It's election day, and we decided to send some journalists to Gary, Indiana, to see if we could be told who to vote for. Are you Reverend Nash? Yes. Oh, hi. My dad's from Georgia, and he he's actually voting for Trump. That's why I've been so on the fence about it. <laughs> Why? He just, he says that like, he likes his business experience and that he isn't, like he just says what he means all the time, I guess. I don't That's know. That's not always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone's impulsive and they act on the help. I mean, for Christ's sake, this guy's going to have a nuclear launch code. You know, he wakes up, you know, all oh, screw Iran and then starts a war, you know. That's not always a good thing. We, we need leadership who, who does have, you know, the courage to stand up for their convictions, but also has a self-control to think beyond their immediate action. So should I just vote like straight ticket Democrat? That would be nice. 
people, I mean, you head to the pole now and you really don't have a lot of information to deal with issues, that would be probably the best bet. So prayerfully, you'll just go in and hit straight Democratic ticket. I guess you wouldn't want anyone making a mistake and voting for the person of their own choice. 